Hey everyone, Forrest here, and today we're gonna to take a look at what is new with the June Lightroom 8.4 update that just launched today. Now, one quick thing, if you are a Lightroom Classic user, this video is focusing on Lightroom, but I've left a link to the Lightroom Classic video down below. The second thing I wanna say is make sure you head over to your Creative Cloud application on your computer and make sure that you're running the newest version and that you have the update installed or else you're not gonna see these new features. All right, so what is new inside of Lightroom? Well, the first thing is there have been a couple couple of updates and improvements made to the remove tool inside of Lightroom. Namely, really fast ways to remove distractions from your images. I think the best way is just to show you this. So I'm gonna take this photo here, I'm gonna bring it in to the, I say develop module, but just to the edit section of Lightroom, and I'm gonna go to the remove tool. Now inside of the remove tool, we now have these two new options down at the bottom for distraction removal. And if I expand people, what it's gonna do is detect any people in the photo that it thinks might be distracting. You can see here, I'm tending to the fire. It's identified these two extra people, my friends here as potential distractions that we want to remove. Now, if I was to click the remove button right now, it would just generative fill those areas. It would remove those areas. But you have a choice here. You don't have to remove all of the people it identifies. So as an example, if we wanna just remove the, the gentleman here in the middle, but we don't wanna remove the guy over here on the right side, I can just click the pin for this one, hit the delete key, and now he will be unmarked for removal. Essentially anything red when I click the remove button is what's gonna go away. So now that we have that gentleman in the middle selected, we're gonna go ahead and click on remove. We'll give it a second to run here and the magic will happen. Basically, there we go. We can see it has filled in that entire area with the house, with the grass, with the chair. It rebuilt the chair. And you all, like, I think we've all gotten kind of used to generative fill and the, the, the kind of the amazing remove tool capabilities. But I just want to point out, like, doing that five years ago would have been like an hour at least of work to put into it. It's kind of amazing how far things have come. And I think we, uh, I start to take this stuff for granted, like, oh yeah, it's always, it hasn't always been this easy. It's kind of amazing. Now, at this point, if we're not super happy with what the computer did, we can click on that blue pin, and down here we have a, a number of variations. So just like standard generative options, we have three choices. We can click through, here's option one, here's option two, and here's option three. I think option one looks the most realistic. However, if you're not happy with any of them, you can click generate again and get another three options. So you can hop through here, you can keep regenerating until you find an option that you really like. Um, there we go, let's see, click through these. That one looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm a fan of number two here. And there we are, we've got that person removed from the image. I do wanna take a quick break on this video and let you know that if you are struggling with your organization inside of Lightroom, very common issue, I have a complete like full blown ultimate organization online class for Lightroom. It's got hours of video content from me. It's all exclusive. It's not on YouTube, it's not anywhere else. And I'll leave a link down in the description. So check that out if you're having a hard time figuring out albums and a good workflow and where things store and all that stuff, I highly recommend it. Obviously I'm a little bit biased because I built it, but I think it's a really good course. So check that out. Uh, anyway, back to the video. All right, the second one that you may have seen is window reflection removal. Now this one is amazing, and, and this has been in Camera Raw for a while. Uh, it's, it's one of those cool ones that's like mind-blowingly awesome. So let me go to the grid view, and here's a photo I shot recently just through a store window in Missoula. You can see there's a lot of window reflections. I'm gonna go into the remove tool. I'm gonna click on reflections under distraction removal and turn on apply. And that's gonna give it a minute to think about where the reflections are, calculate how everything's working, and then we'll look at some of the options. All right, so just like that, it has finished. You'll notice the first dropdown we have is quality. I'm actually just gonna put mine on best. It'll take a little bit longer to calculate each time. So if you have a slow machine, you might wanna step that back a little bit. But I would recommend before you're like done with the picture, run the final amount calculations on best so that you get the best quality out of Lightroom. Now we have an amount slider. Now this is where it's really cool. So at 100%, we are removing 100% of what we're capable of removing when it comes to window reflection. And if I click the little eyeball, we can see here's the before, here's the after, and it's doing a phenomenal job, right? It's like bringing back detail that I didn't even know was there, okay? It's, it's amazing. But the cool thing is we can also take amount to the left 
and actually see what it removed. Like here's me, here's my arm, here's my phone, here's my blurry arm over here, here's the sidewalk. You can it basically replace the image with the reflection. So this is like a, a negative 100 to 100, negative 100 being get rid of the original picture, I only want the reflection, and positive 100 being get rid of the reflection, I only want the picture. Now, in general, I've found myself putting this pretty much up near 100, 80, 90, something like that, 100%. It does an amazing job. Now, are there some weirdnesses sometimes? Sure, like here's the texture of the sidewalk still in the window. It's not perfect, especially when you push it really hard, but like, to imagine that we could do this, going from this to this, is amazing. And, and for so many people that I know, like I've showed this to students for the last few months because it's been in Adobe Camera Raw, it's been an incredibly useful tool for a lot of photographers. All right, so those are our two new tools and two new features built into the Remove tool. But what else is new with this update? Well, the next one is not a new feature. It's just a new way that a feature can be applied. And it has to do with the AI upscaling, the super resolution, and the AI denoise, the denoise tools, both of which I use all the time within Lightroom. So previous to now, those tools, when they were applied to a photo, they were actually applied to an image and a copy of the image needed to be made because those were destructive tools. So if you use super resolution, it would make a new photo for you and it would apply super resolution to that new image. And you could then take that and edit it and do whatever you wanted to. Well, they've now changed that. So super resolution, raw details, denoise can now all be applied just in your normal editing workflow. And all of this lives inside of the detail panel. So check this out. I've got an image right here and I want to AI upscale this. I want to use super resolution. So I'm going to go over here on the right side to the detail panel and you'll notice under detail we have denoise, raw details, and super resolution. So no longer a need to bring up a separate panel where then we have to make a duplicate of the photo and you got to remember, oh, which one's the denoise, which one's not, look at the file name. It's super easy. If I want super resolution, I just turn it on right here. We let the computer work for a couple seconds. And here we are with the super resolution photo. You can see if I go into my info, I can see that this image is now 12,480 pixels by 7,356 pixels. If I go back to the editing controls and I turn off super resolution, we go back to info, you can see my original is 6240 by 3678. So just like before, super resolution doubles your width, doubles your height, giving you four times as many pixels. And it does a really good job. So, so no real changes to like the functionality. It's still doing the same thing. It's just how we get to those tools has become much faster, which I love. I think that's super awesome. So again, like this photo, this is a drone shot, not the highest resolution, little bit blurry, not super crispy, well, if we go in and we do a nice denoise, let this thing get sharper and crisper because it's got a lot of that drone nastiness that's super common, we'll let that run. And we don't have to make a second photo, we can just zoom in and all of a sudden we have a lot more detail. So if I look at the before after here on the detail panel, we can see here's our before and here's our after. Before after. So things get sharper, things get crisper. Again, not new tools. We've had those for years, but now we can apply them just in the normal editing controls, which is so much faster and more convenient than always making copies of our photos. All right, everybody, those are the notable updates in this feature release. If you want to learn more, I've left a link to the official release notes down below in the description so you can learn a little bit more. Obviously, there's your normal suite of bug fixes and things like that. But the big thing is those removal tools and again, moving all of those enhancements in into the detail panel, which is gonna make workflows a lot faster. If you guys like this video, I would really appreciate you dropping a like down below. Hit subscribe to stay up to date with future videos. And lastly, if you have any questions or anything like that, leave them in the comments below. Thanks everybody, and I hope to see you in a future video.